Hey guys, <clears throat> I'm on my way to my next call now. Um, I wanted to talk to y'all about something while I'm while I uh, am driving to our next call. Um, I want to talk about sins and and what it means when when Jesus forgives us of our sins when we become children of of, uh, of Christ. You know, a lot of us we wonder. You know. In the beginning, we will we will sin a lot, and you know you'll you'll start noticing. You know when you first give your life to Christ, you feel good. You feel you know you feel just so energetic. You're washed white, you know, and then you say a bad word, you know, and then you start you know getting conviction, you know, or you, you continue to do some of the things that you do prior to you giving your life to Christ and you start to feel a disconnect and which is which is going to happen when we sin it it shorts it short cycles you know it short cycles really uh, it short circuits you know the power of God to us um, you know unfortunately it's just the way it is and you know it's, it's very important to understand that when when we do sin, we're not condemned, you know, and, you know, there's, there's no amount of sin that you can do for God to just wash his hands of you. I'm sorry, there's none. The Bible speaks about that. It's very, very, very clear. The Bible says, I will not leave you nor forsake you, um, regardless of what you've done what you do during your walk with Christ. Um, you know, you're going to sin. You're going to make mistakes. But it's, it's very important to know that He's not going to walk out on you. He's not going to stop loving you. Now, yes, you will feel a disconnect. Um, you know, you will feel convict. You know, He will convict you. Um, you know, and when we start feeling that way, we need to turn to Him. Because... You know, Satan, he loves that. He enjoys the fact that, you know, we sin. He doesn't want us to ask for forgiveness. He doesn't want us to go to Christ and, you know, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm having a very, you know, just a horrible day. I, I just, I find myself keep sinning. I keep cussing. I keep getting angry. I'm just, I just feel so disconnected from you. Where are you? Why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? You know, but it's important to know that he has not, you know, but you cannot sin and still walk with Christ. You can't do it. Now, yes, he understands that you will sin. Um, you know, it's, it's just, just what it is, you know, but you're not, you're not, you know, you're not kicked out of salvation. Um, once your name is written in the book of lambs, it stays there. Um, now there is talks that it can be blotted out and that's, you know, you know, and, and there's talks of the unforgivable sin and, you know, there's a big, you know, the unforgivable sin is, is, is just what it is. It's unforgivable. Um, everybody's always worried that they've committed the unforgivable sin. Now what the Bible says about the unforgivable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit and, you know, you know, and basically saying that Jesus gets his power from the devil, that will get you the unforgivable sin real fast. Um, but even then, even then, I personally believe if you, you know, if you, if you believe that Christ died on the cross for our sins, he will forgive you. Um, so we need not focus on what's forgivable, what's unforgivable. Just know in your heart, when we get on our knees and put our hands in the air and we, we cry out to Jesus, know that he has forgiven you. Don't question it. Put your faith in what he said. And that's the meaning of true faith. You know, if you get up and you're still wondering, I, I just, I don't know if he forgave me. I just don't know. You have to know in your heart. My voice cracked. Did you hear that? Um, you have to know in your heart that that he did forgive you. 
And, you know, if, if we start second guessing that, then, you know, we, we, we're not, we're not having full faith in Christ, you know? So anytime we sin, it's very important that we ask for forgiveness. You know, we need to have that forgiveness. We need to, we need to let him know that, look, we recognized our wrongs and, and I need forgiveness. And, and he is just, he will give it to you. There's no question about whether he's not going to accept your, for, you know, your, your request because it says in the Bible, clear as day, I will not leave you, nor I will forsake you, nor will I, I will not forsake you. You know, the Bible also says, you know, uh, asking, you know, it shall be given, you know, seek and it shall be found, uh, knock and it shall be opened. Um, you know, I am short, you know, kind of shortening it a little bit. Um, but the, it's the gist of it. Um, no, I'm not changing the Bible. I'm just, you know, it's still the same concept. Um, you know, we have to put 100% faith in Christ that he is going to forgive us of our sins. And once we grasp that concept, that when we get down on our knees and we repent... That he, that he heard it, that he did forgive us. You know, we are washed white again. We are forgiven. And you, you hold that very close to your heart. Um, it's just what we have to do. You know, and, and, and I, you know, like I said, I just wanted to speak on this because I do see a lot of, you know, you know, well, I've just had a horrible day and I just I just feel so disconnected. I feel like he's walked out on me. I feel like he's given up. You know, and he hasn't. You know, it's just like I said, sin short fuses the the power of Christ, the link to us in Christ. It it does. It will disconnect us just like that. And, you know, a spiritual disconnect from Christ is not somewhere you want to be. You know, because believe it or not, it has a big effect on your life. Christ is everywhere out here today. Uh, he's, he's been here forever. He's everlasting. And, you know, walking with Christ and, and having the Holy Spirit to, to help you and show you and, and to help you grow is one of the, the most amazing things that we could ever, that we could ever go through. And it's something that, it's something that we need to grow. We have to have it. Um, and pick your Bible up. Read your Bible. You know, you can watch YouTube videos all day long. You can listen to sermons. And that's great. That That is, that is, that's good. But, you still need to read your Bible. You can't depend on somebody else's information to, to base your judgments on the way you live your life and what Christ says. Because each one of our relationships with Christ is personal, is intimate, you know, and, you know, we have to do our part, you know, so, and, and trust me, when you start getting into this book, you will start to learn, you will start to know, okay, well, that cuss word I said yesterday, I, I am forgiven. Because it says it right there in the book. It, it has to be true, right? Yeah, it does. It's right there in the red words. You know, and... It, it's, it's, it's faith. You know... It's, you know, faith without works... It just doesn't... It, it's not good. You know, you can't get into heaven without having faith and works. You know, they, they're, they're, they're one in the same. You, you can't, ha you can't have one without the other, you know, and, you know, and, and I just wanted to reach out to everybody and, and, and discuss this issue because, you know, there is a big, you know, there's a big misconception, especially amongst new baby Christians, you know, because they don't know much. They know that they've accepted the Lord as their savior. They do believe that he died on the cross for them. But they have yet to read the Bible. They've yet to see what he actually wrote. What he actually said. And the reason why I use the word wrote is because the Bible was made up of several men. 
that were guided by the Holy Spirit to write the Bible. And it was based off of their interactions with Jesus Christ while he was on earth and the, and the acts and the works that they've done after, his, after, uh, after the crucifixion. Um, but no, what it boils down to is, you know, you just got to have faith. And I know it can be hard. Trust me, I battled it. We all battle it, you know. Imagine what Peter was thinking when, when, when Jesus asked him to step out on the boat, you know, in the middle of the ocean, you know, imagine what his, imagine what was going through his head. You know, well, I see you standing on water, but I'm not Jesus. You know, I'm just a normal human. And sure enough, what happened? As long as Peter had his focus on Christ, he stayed above water. But the minute, the second he took his mind off of Christ, what happened? He fell. And, you know, it's it's amount of faith that we have to have that he is going to keep his promise. Jesus needs to know that we have faith in him. And it's not to say that we're not going to struggle. You know, we're not supposed to have anxiety. We're not supposed to worry about things. We're supposed to take everything and include him in it. And you will find peace within him. You know, and we have to do our part, you know, because there's nothing, you know, just, just imagine, put yourself in Jesus' shoes for just a second, you know, and I know it's hard to comprehend, you know, we don't, we don't have the ability to comprehend the things of heaven, but just put yourself in his shoes for a second. Say that you're Jesus and, you know, you have the whole world. And you're looking down and you have people that are asking you for things and you see that they don't have faith. You see that, you know, you know, you see that they're, they're praying, but, you know, and you're listening, you hear it, you know, but either, you know, hey, look, you know, I'm not going to answer that prayer right now because I have other things that I require of you first, or if I do this, it's going to affect your life in a dramatic way, and it, it, it's, it does not get answered. But there's nothing, there, there's not a worse feeling of, of not being believed in. And we have to believe in Christ's power. It's there. It's all there. You know, we see the works every day. A lot of us are blinded to it. You know, and, and that's where we pray and we ask for guidance. We ask that the Lord removes the shield from our eyes and shows us the way. You know, a lot of you, you know, a lot of you watching this probably won't be Christians. You know, a lot of you probably won't be watching the videos because it is a Christian channel. Um, some of you might only watch the, the technician portion of it. Um, but just know that Jesus is in everything that we do. He's in the trees. He's in the sky, the, the, the ponds. You know, just take a step outside one day. Slow down. Just stop. Walk outside and just, just look at the creation that has been placed before us. The, the amount of detail in everything just take a second and look try to see the beauty of everything that is out here the sky the trees when they turn beautiful color in autumn you know just just try to fathom it and you'll find Jesus you'll start to see Jesus is here he's he has not left us he has not forsaken us so next time when you're praying, when you're asking forgiveness of that sin or of sins, know that, know that he has forgiven you and you do not have to worry. Father, I ask that anybody watching this video, you please show them the way, Lord. Your glory and your grace 
reaches us every day. Father, I ask that anybody who prays to ask for forgiveness, you put it on them that you have forgiven them, Lord. Father, I pray that, you know, we start reading the Bible more so we can understand your word a lot better. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Y'all guys have a good one, okay? We're going to check back in here shortly.